I got nervous. I got in the Fight Tips gym and I was like, and I just blew my wad like oh right away. God, I was like, what's my best stuff? Life. But don't worry, it sounds like BS, so people aren't gonna. I'm not worried. They're, they're not gonna. They're not gonna try it. Oh, do I have to stand here and like be like, okay? <laughs> what's up, everybody? <laughs> okay. What's up, everybody? Shane here with my favorite YouTuber, Icy Mike from Hard to Hurt. What's up? <laughs> I mean, I know you said you're my favorite YouTuber, and I'm supposed to be like, oh, that's a joke, but it's true. I really am. No, YouTuber. it is true. It is true. <laughs> um, also, a hell of a coach um, and a, a funny dude. Stop. Uh, stop, not... stop. Go on. Keep going. <laughs> Today, we're talking about where to look in a fight. Where should your eyes be? A lot of people say keep eye contact. A lot of people say look to the chest. What do you say? Um, so, I, what I teach people or what I do? What do you teach people? I start them right here, right across the chest. Okay. Right? That's where I start them. Yeah. But I have a list. Maybe we'll get into... I think there's times where you should look somebody in the eye. I All think right. there's a time and place for it. All right. Let's talk about it. I think most people teach to look to the chest, and the idea is you can use your peripherals to see uh, the feet. You can see footwork. You can see the shoulders. And a lot of people say that if you look at the chest, you can see the shoulders rotate, and then you know which punch or strike is coming. Have you read that one? Yeah. I mean, I've heard lots of things. Yeah. I think largely... Uh, it's mostly subconscious. I think it, because if you just look here, I do believe that your peripheral vision picks things up faster than your directed vision. Like, if you stare straight into a fist, right. it's harder to see it coming. Oh, yeah, especially that one. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look like this, your peripheral, I'm going to get a little kind of out there. Please. Is that cool? All right. My theory, I don't know, scientists maybe can comment down below because I'm sure we've got a bunch of them. Right. <laughs> uh, your peripheral vision, you prioritize danger in your peripheral vision because if I'm doing a task and then there's danger in my peripheral, then I can divert my attention to it. I think as fighters, if we train ourselves to look here and rely on that peripheral vision, we don't get caught chasing things with our eyes. Exactly. You know, because that's our, uh, the signals of danger. Yeah. It's basically like keeping your danger meter always on. So there's actually a word for that. It's called cicade. And it's, it's the amount of time that it takes to look at one thing to focus on it, then to look to something else, and then your brain has to register what it's looking at. And that's why, and, and Eddie Abasolo talks about this all the time, driving down the street, he's like, you're not looking at the pedestrians crossing, you're not looking directly at the cars behind you in the rear view, you're not looking at the traffic lights, you're looking at all of that at the same time with your peripheral. Yeah, and that, that time to react, we are talking about fractions of seconds, but you know what else takes fractions of seconds? Yeah, getting knocked out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Takes very little time. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I do like the idea of looking to the chest. I know you had mentioned looking in the eyes and the time and place for that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the chest. And this is what I do. And I learned this from a, a YouTube comment, believe it or not. So I, there's things that you can learn from that. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Wrong. Yeah, it's po possible. Someone shared um, a, a scientific research paper on what they call deadpan eyes. And it was super fascinating. And they talk about how kind of when you're driving, you kind of just like drift. And you're like, whoa, what have I been doing for the past 10 minutes? Yeah. And if you watch the high-level fighters, like Sanchai is a really good example of this, where it looks like they're looking past them. Like their eyes may be generally looking towards the chest. The thousand-yard stare. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Nothing. Yeah, just... Yeah, and it's that poker face and it's everything. But yeah, it's almost like you're looking through them. They don't even exist. And you're not threatened by anything. And then you're not going to overreact to certain things. So that's been... Uh, what? Yeah, you ever look at a, a great white shark? You ever look in his <laughs> eyes, man? He's not thinking about anything. He's just like, ah, yep. ah I'm here to eat. Ah, yep. ah, I'm here to eat. So when do we look at the eyes? Why would we look at the eyes? Fader Emelianenko would be like this the whole fight. Well, it depends. If you're a super intimidating dude, you can get away with it. If you're not, it, I don't recommend it. Um, but I think there's a time. I've, In my experience, this is largely anecdotal. Okay. Right, because you know we can't see in every fight where everyone's eyes are, and, and a lot of times this is subconscious. Anecdotally, I have a few techniques I use where I intentionally look them in the eyes when I'm trying to either get them to commit to come forward or commit to throwing a strike. Hmm. Um, one of them uh, I teach in the, the front kick course I do. If I'm boxing you up and I want you to really respond to me relieving this pressure, I shift my weight back and drop my hands, I'll look you in the eyes and it. In my experience, it has had a hypnotic effect to draw that person forward. That's interesting. To run into this, it's been my experience. I'm sure, people will say no. No, that but it's it's been repeatable for me in I'll, sparring. Yeah. Box, box, box. Look at you. You're gonna come forward and <laughs> run into that. And as long as I don't look where I'm gonna kick. Yeah. They'll run right into it every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I wonder if it's like, you're looking at the eyes and psychologically they're thinking like. They're waiting. You're waiting for them to step in. Yeah. Like it's your turn now to go. And then yeah. they, they're like, oh, I got to go. Yeah. It's sort of, I'm putting the, I'm putting my attention on you. So now it's your, 
Yeah, your turn. And then maybe. Also, also the idea of the saccade too. It's like maybe they are looking past you and then they make the eye contact. They forget about everything forget else. Forget everything. And then they run into that. Going back to driving a car. They teach when you're driving a car and they learn where your eyes go, the car will go. Yeah. So if you become overly fixated on something, so maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe I'm pulling their drawing. I'm attention. hypnotizing them with these That's what it is. These yeah. beautiful eyes. <laughs> I'm drawing them in. It's been my experience. And then there's always looking down, striking high, looking high, the, striking every high. Sport, look every sport. Every, every look over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. passing what? a ball while looking the other way. Yeah. Every sport has that. Yeah. I, I love to go like, rah, yeah. rah, and like look at it and be like, rah. Yeah, yeah. But then for beginners, I will also tell them like, watch the strike land. Because so many times they get like into the pocket and they're like, oh, I hope this lands and they close their eyes. So I do want them to actually see strikes landing. Or they think they landed a big shot and it actually hit the glove or the shoulder. Uh, super pro tip when you are sparring with new guys that do that and they do rock you. And then they finally look up, just look at him like, no, you didn't get me. Yeah, yeah exactly. They totally got me. Yeah, yeah. He totally winged this overhand. I'm like, yeah, never and know. he gets up and I'm like, bro, you haven't landed a hit this whole round. <laughs> that hit my shoulder. Yeah. I my hip. <laughs> Dude, you haven't landed anything. I have, an, I have another one. Yeah, please. Yeah, I have another one. Yeah. It's sort of proprietary. That's another one. This, this is an, the reason I don't, I've never even done a video on this technique because I know that people are going to be like, that's not real. It doesn't work. We're getting a secret proprietary tip here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, proprietary it's, tips. Yeah, it's basically, I, I think in the, this probably goes to, if I look at your legs and strike up high, I am misdirecting, I'm not telling you what I'm thinking or, or communicating. Mm -hmm. This is sort of, this, this eye contact stuff, I think is sort of like maybe kind of a inversion of that. I do one where when I'm outside of range, like maybe we just had our exchange and we did our kind of, Reset. BS reset, you know, where it just means that we're just tired and lazy, just trying to let some seconds pass. Yeah, a little L step around for no reason at all. Always. You know, a little rock back, do this. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Guys, you're not doing anything. Anyway, that's a, a separate video. Yeah, exactly. I will take what I call wrong steps, which is where I just take like walking steps. Ah, uh, yeah. Right? Which that alone. And reset or something? Or? A lot. Well, when, this has been my experience. If I, if I go like this and I stare you in the eye and you're under pressure and it's real and then I walk like this, so Shane is smart. Shane's like, nah, this is, this is, this is Fugazi. This is not, you know, he's trying something. <laughs> yeah. Typically I'll get a jab, uh, right? If uh, I just walk uh, like this, I'll get the jab. Yeah. That's usually what I'll get. Yeah. So I'll put my hands down, make solid eye contact with them, start walking forward, predict the jab uh, and then counter I love it. it. I love like, it. I'm talking, guys, 90% of the time. Yeah. If you're out at range, you drop your hands and start walking forward He'll and stare him in the eyes, he'll jab. He, he kind of is supposed to jab. Like you kind of, right, right, right. it's sort of like, like I'm kind of gaslighting him. Like yeah. I'm sort of like, yo, dude, what are you going to do? You're supposed to hit me, right? Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. I come here? Boom. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I made you do that. Yep, yep. It's been my experience that when you make eye contact with people, you can make them jump through hoops for you. So what's your Venmo that they can send you money for that? Yeah, that dude, tip? that's, yeah. I've never, dude, I got, I got nervous. I got in the fight tips gym and I was like, and I just blew my wad like oh right my away. God, I was like, what's my best like... stuff? But don't worry, it sounds like BS. So people aren't gonna, I'm not worried. <laughs> they're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna try it. All right guys, please follow Mike if you're not already. Seriously, my favorite YouTuber out there. Every time he's got a video that comes out, I'm one of the first to click and comment on it. So check him out, links in the description below. Until next time, I'm Shane. And I might see Mike, I've always wanted to do this. Oh my God. For the underdogs. Why do you say it so quietly? Because they, they, they listen, they listen. You've always, that's always been, I've always wondered that. He's always like, I'm Shane, this is Vince and Ali, fight tips for the underdogs. Well, it's like, why like, do you get super quiet? Because I, I feel like Morgan Freeman, if he were to do it, he'd be like, I'm Morgan Freeman, fight tips. I don't think you can, do, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Shane. And I might see Mike. For the underdogs. For the underdogs! Oh. Man, Shane, when that thing wasn't working, Shane was really hoping it was broken. Oh no. Oh, broke. Oh no. Oh, ah! And now I smite. You will die. I would like to have you sign our wall. I want to have each guest that comes in sign the wall, but you're going to be the very first person to do it. And I've designated this wall to be it. You want me to put spray paint on this? Yeah. Have you ever tagged I know, bro, I'm not a little hoodlum like you, man. I've never tagged anything in my life. <laughs> Shane, I'm serious, man. It's, I, a, it's a blank canvas. Come on, this is, this is the old. Out with the old, in with the new. Looks like a four. Oh, see, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you just gonna do icy? 
I felt insecure and I felt pressure about it. And then as soon as I finished, you're like, it looks like a four-year-old. It's fun, ain't it? A lowercase i. No, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs>